Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our community <coughs> for people living at home with dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am your host for today's activities. Our topic today is brought to you by our Executive Director, Gail Snyder, who is bringing cookie conversations. And I believe we're doing thumbprint cookies unless she's changed her mind. So Gail, show us what you have today. Hello, everyone. It's so good to see you all. And I understand there's some new folks that I haven't met before. So Margie and Bonnie, it's great to see you in person. And Hi. welcome to the Cookie Conversations program. So I have selected something different from anything that we've done in that this is a cookie but it's a cookie made without regular flour and it's made with a natural sugar substitute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me share my screen and share my recipe with you. Let's see. <clears throat> Everything closed on me when I had to exit. Uh -huh. okay. So it may take me just a minute to get it back. Yeah. So how has everyone been? We've missed We're, you. We've missed yeah. you, yeah. And yeah. I have missed you all very much. Gail has been really busy. Yes. Keeping us afloat. Yeah, sometime, maybe, not now, but sometime maybe we can find out what all you've been doing, Gail. All right, that sounds like a great plan. This is what happens when you don't come often enough to keep it all, you know, on routine. Oh, the funny thing is, I used my camera and my Zoom meeting, this same meeting room yesterday at the office. Wow. <laughs> and it worked fine. But I think it's actually my internet connection here yeah. at home yeah. that mm -hmm. is the problem. We, we have a, 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 on your name, it says Gil Snyder's network bandwidth is low. Mm. So it, well, is, it is your, your, your network. That, that might explain it. Thank you, Don. I hadn't even noticed that, but <clears throat> right. Yeah. Okay. So while we're waiting for that to open, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the recipes. So I have been uh, trying to limit my sugar intake uh, since the last time I've been with you. And so I haven't had any significant amount of regular sugar since the latter part of May. Good for you. Which for is you. a major accomplishment for me. And so I decided to bring a recipe that would um, use some of the things that I'm using in some of my own cooking. So this recipe uses almond flour, super fine. This is the one that I have used. It also uses ethanol sweetener, which is packaged as Swerve. And this is powdered. Mm. When I take it out, it'll look like it looks like powdered sugar. Mm. So um, I still can't get that PowerPoint to open. So I'm going to go ahead and progress through the recipe um, that I'm using another platform to view my recipe so that we can get these cookies made. And Martha, if you would, um, for the recording, yes, ma'am, can you put it on um, speaker view so that the picture of what we're doing will be bigger for the recording? It is on speaker. So what you'll have to. OK, so you only see who's speaking. Yes. Yes. OK. And it would right. be, it so would... we're going to start. What was that, Martha? 
it would be helpful if we could all put ourselves on mute because every time we have a sniffle or a cough or a, a, a throat clearing, it goes away from you and turns on to who's making the noise. So if or you, you want to talk, just... take yourself off of mute, but leave it on mute while she's working unless you have a question you, or a comment. You that doesn't also... work because anytime anybody sniffles even on mute, it still goes off. Um, you can you can pin her if you like click on her thing. You can you can pin her so that she doesn't it doesn't change. What does that mean to pin her? <clears throat> it means it locks her in place. I mean, um, what is the but there's function? A, it's called pin. Um, P I N. Um, um, Martha, I'm here. If you click on the little dots, uh huh. If you click on the little three dots, if you get my picture, and you click on the three dots besides mute, down in that drop down, it says pin. Do you see that? Hmm, I do not. Okay. Gail, well, on my screen, yeah. on my screen, if I just point at your picture and right click, it'll let you pick one of the options to let you pin. Oh, I see yeah. pin. I, now that Don says that. Okay, okay, I just did it. Let's see if it works. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. It takes a village. So now okay, so I've, already, <laughs> so I've already pre-measured three tablespoons of cream cheese. So that's the first ingredient for the recipe. So I'm going to add that to the mixing bowl. Nancy, you're not about to go away now, are you? Nancy? Don't want you to miss out on the cookies, even though it's almost 11 o'clock. And then we're going to use a half a cup of butter, which I've already pre-measured. Add that to the mixer. And then we need, get back to my recipe. It keeps scrolling away from it. A third of a cup of our sweetening ingredient. And you'll see if you look at this, it looks like powdered sugar. So I'm gonna add that to the mix. Gail, where did you find the erythritol? Uh, they have it at the regular grocery store. Okay, thank you. They had it, I got it at Kroger. Great, thank and you. And the almond flowers from Kroger as well. Okay. So I've mixed that together and it calls for one egg, a half a teaspoon of sea salt, and I'm using the course, but I'm actually going to add it to uh, the flour ingredient to grind it up a little bit more and then it's going to use vanilla. I've already pre-mixed um, a batch of the dough and refrigerated it because this dough is very soft. So for this recipe, I'm going to do an experiment um, to change it up. And I'm going to try using sweet white sorghum flour in place of the almond flour and see how that comes out. Um, the texture of almond for me, 
because it's a little bit gritty. And I'm hoping that the sorghum flour won't have that same texture. So we're gonna give that a try. And the recipe calls for one. And so we are going to use We're going to use the sorghum flour. And this one's not quite as grainy it as is the fun. Other. It is fun to work with different kinds of flour so you learn what they do. Yes. So this one, it's a little bit darker, if you can see. It's a little bit darker than the almond flour but it has a texture that's more like regular flour than the almond flour. Okay, so now I've got my flour measured and this is the sorghum flour. So I'm gonna add the egg to the mixture and then I'm gonna slowly add the flour. Can you all see what's going on at the mixer? Yes, ma'am. You have it perfectly positioned. Say that again. You have it perfectly positioned. Okay, good. Yes. Are you adding the salt to it? Uh, yes, I didn't add it yet. I skipped that step on accident. So, where is my, oh. What other sweeteners have you tried? This is the only one that I've actually tried so far. Um, there are some recipes that are using that fairly new it's called monk fruit, and I haven't tried it yet. Okay, so what I've done is I've used the back side of my uh, cookie scoop to try to grind up that coarse sea salt just a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to add the salt. Make sure I get my spatula out of here. We don't want plastic in the cookie. What's that? We don't want red plastic in the cookies. Uh, well, <laughs> one of my most awful cooking stories, when I was a teenager and I decided that I was going to be the baker in the family, I accidentally turned on my mom's hand mixer with a regular tablespoon in the mixer bowl and it got caught between the blades and it ruined the mixer. And I felt so bad. I went to the store with my allowance or my money I had from my job and I bought my mom a new mixer. Oh, sweet. <laughs> what a way to learn. Okay, so yeah. So I'm always very careful about it. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the difference in these two uh, doughs before we, I didn't put the vanilla in that, did I? I don't think I did. We're going back to the mixer bowl. And when you finish. I think we're gonna need the taste of the vanilla. Definitely. Yeah. That should have been added in when I put in the egg. Okay, so now I want to show you the difference in what these two doughs look like. You have to point the camera down for us to see now. Yes, I will do that once I get it ready. 
All right, this is the dough that we just mixed with the sorghum flour. Okay. This is the dough that I pre-mixed earlier this morning with the almond flour. Slightly different color. Well, can you tell the difference? Yes. This is the almond flour. This is the sorghum flour. So then we also want to, this one isn't quite as gritty as it is when it's powdered. I've got just a little bit of it between my finger, but it feels more gritty than the sorghum. So I'm hoping it'll change the texture just a little bit. Um, I decided the texture of the almond flour would make a good cornbread, and I'm going to investigate making cornbread with it and see how that comes out. Mm, how fun. All right. So I'm going to refrigerate the dough we just mixed. Let's put that aside. And we're going to spread out, sorry, that was really loud. We're going to spread out the almond flour dough a little bit. Now, actually, what it wants us to do, what the recipe calls for, is to make it into scoops. And I need to adjust my camera so you can see. There we go. You do that really well. All right. Cookie sheet prepared with uh, parchment paper. So we're going to do small balls. So I'm gonna use my small cookie scoop and we're gonna put this into a ball and put it on the plate are on the cookie sheet. And how big the cookies, these don't really spread out very much. I actually made a batch of these for the 4th of July because I was gonna, uh, I wanted to try not to have the special goodies that we always have. My, Sister's favorite birthday cake is red velvet Waldorf cake. Mm. And I made the cake for her, but I didn't have any. <laughs> that was tough. That's One great restraint. Favorite. One of my favorite cakes. But this, uh, those of you who've been with us for a while, do you remember when we made the... Um, French butter cookies mm -hmm. quite a while back. Steve, Steve is holding, I think you do. Steve yes, is holding I do. it. Yeah. Okay. This dough is soft like that dough was. And is almost impossible to work with if it's not refrigerated. Does anybody remember making thumbprint cookies as a child? No. No, but I remember going to the local bakery to get the thumbprint cookies that were filled with cake frosting every day after school when I was in high school. What All kind right, of that's frosting? That's so sticky. I'm going to have to stop and wash my hands. 
the frosting that you put on a cake, like buttercream uh, frosting, they put buttercream frosting in the middle. Okay, now I, think I remember having the kind that had like the kind of jelly stuff that you filled jelly donuts with. Okay, well, top. this will be a little bit similar because these thumbprint cookies get uh, a keto jam. When I send them to you, you actually will get to add your own jam to them uh, uh, because I don't think that will ship well in the mail. <laughs> so now to yeah. make the thumbprint, I'm actually going to use the back of my teaspoon to make the thumbprint uh -huh. in the cookies. You know, because I like uniformity. That's so fun. You just <laughs> need to use your thumb. I might have to. You don't see the ridges if you use your, your, uh, back your teaspoon. <laughs> That's actually faster. It is faster. Plus you see the ridges. Well, the texture of this dough, you don't really get the ridges. Then we get a part of Gail with every cookie. That's right. <laughs> All right. So now these are ready to go in the oven. Cool. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. And if you can believe it, the recipe says that they need to bake 11 to 12 minutes, which to me seemed like a really long time for mm -hmm. the texture of that dough. But the almond flour also doesn't brown the same as regular flour. I'm going to set this dough to the side and we're going to take a peek at our other dough while we wait for those cookies to bake. Margie and Bonnie, you haven't had the pleasure of having the grand tour of Gail's kitchen. Uh, she tells me that she and her husband redid this kitchen and she now has red accents everywhere. It just makes it a beautiful place for her to work. Someday she'll show it to us again. All right, so now I have out the other dough made with the sorghum flour. And I'm gonna do the same thing with it. So roll that into a ball. And I wanna this flower has a little bit more of a sweeter smell to it than the other did. I would think so since it's sorghum flower. Right, right. Now, I have to look at the ingredients. Let's see. I don't know if this one will be considered keto, but for someone who is trying not to have regular flowers, this is an alternative. So for instance, someone who might be celiac or need gluten-free food? Correct. Good. You know, that might be something to ask anybody uh, who participates in cookie conversations about allergies. Does anybody have any allergies we need to know about? It's a lot better when everybody's unmuted and we can just talk naturally. Well, if you want to, go ahead and unmute. We've got the cookies in the oven if everybody wants to unmute. I think we can, we can survive it. <laughs> no allergies at our house. Okay. Oh. No food allergies except other than taste. <laughs> no coconut. No coconut. Oh, I love coconut. John hates it. I, I, I like coconut. fresh coconut, <laughs> but I cannot stand processed coconut. Uh, 
I'm not sure if I've ever had fresh coconut. When they oh just take and chop open the top. Yeah. And just pull it out. It's really good. The process just kind of, it, uh, something about it, it just makes me gag. It's dry. Dried, yeah. And just the, something about the texture, but fresh coconut is really good. Is it the stringy texture of it? <coughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so now we have this batch ready to go in the oven. Okay. They cool. look similar, but this dough's not quite as soft as the other dough either. And that didn't refrigerate. This one didn't refrigerate near as long as the other one. Okay. I'm going to pop this into the oven. And now let me see if I can actually pull up that slide with my recipe on it so you can see it. Okay. Does your uh, apron have Santa's on it? No, it's cherries. Oh, cherries, okay. It kind of looked like a Christmas apron, so that's why. Now, no, it's, it's red cherries. I see it now. Background. I see it now. <laughs> All right, so let's see if this slide will open. Oh. Good for you. All right. Can you see that? Yes. So I think in some of the things that I saw, this recipe is kind of a Christmas cookie recipe, um, but it doesn't have to be. And I can, e I'll email this out to everyone so that you'll have the recipe. And I am actually going to use a keto apricot jam. So Ooh. let me grab that from the pantry. This one I picked up at um, the natural grocer in Fort Worth. You're still on the screen. There we go. Um, and this one does not have anything added. It says apricots, fruit juice, concentration, fruit pectin, and lemon juice. And I love apricots. Nice. So I chose the apricot jam. But you can use whatever you have in your pantry whenever you receive your box of cookies to add that cool. sweet paste. But I did also enjoy the cookies without adding the jam. Cool. Because again, uh, since I've limited what I'm eating, anything that has a little bit of sweet to it tastes good just because I haven't had any sugar since May. All right, so let's see. I haven't tried this before. So this is the apricot jam or preserves that we're gonna add to the cookies when that buzzer goes off. That looks really good. It does look really good. All right, so what questions do y'all have about the recipe? Any questions about the recipe? When we get our boxes, will you let us sample both flowers? 
Yes. Good. Thank you. So you'll have you'll have some of both. Okay. Unless when I taste it, it's just <laughs> awful. <laughs> okay. uh, That's a winner. You put enough it in the middle of the, nothing's going to taste bad. Uh, because I haven't used the sorghum flour before. Mm -hmm. I only pre-tested this recipe with the almond flour. Okay. So Margie and Bonnie, do you do much baking? Or have you done much baking in the past? No. Uh, you no. never make cookies before? Yes. Yes, you have. What's mm -hmm. your favorite kind of cookie to make? Graham cracker cookies. Graham cracker Graham cookies? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever had those. Oh. Mm -hmm. Tell us Is about it what cookies did you used to make? Cracker? What is it making make the graham those? cracker from scratch or is it a cookie made with graham crackers? Cookie made with graham crackers. Okay, mm -hmm. what else is in it? Frosting. Frosting. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds delightful. Some more without the chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we, I'm not a baker, but my husband is, and he makes thumb prick cookies too. And um, okay. we're on keto too. So monk fruit is really good. That's a, we have monk fruit, um, maple syrup, the brown okay. sugar. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm not a baker, but I like making um, what I've named um, Graham Delight. And it's just graham cracker with peanut butter on one and Nutella on the other, and sliced strawberries and bananas. Ooh, that sounds wonderful. That sounds you good. Need, it's really good, but you need a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis would have loved that. He was all yeah. about peanut butter and bananas. Mm. <laughs> so Nancy, what's your favorite cookie? Uh, a, a butter cookie. A butter cookie. Yeah. I do love a good butter cookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we <coughs> take a ride across the kitchen and take a peek in the oven? Okay. Let's go. So you can see a little bit of her kitchen while she rolls around. Oh, yeah. That's She's nice. Ready. Just in time for the buzzer. Yeah. <laughs> Yetta, you're still on mute if you're trying to talk. Okay. There you go. Well, so is Martha. Yeah. Going off and on because my birds. All right. So I, I think these need just another minute. Okay. We're going to give them one more minute. And the others have about six minutes left. So you could see, I don't know if you could see, but the bottom was start, started to get a little bit brown, but the top wasn't browning hardly at all. So I might uh, test moving it up a rack and turning the, the broiler on for just a couple of seconds, just to toast it just a little bit and see, because it's kind of a, a pale cookie when it doesn't brown. I also wondered, um, and if Dusty was here, who's the, the baker, in, the true baker in the group, um, we could ask him his thoughts on if we brushed it with egg whites before we baked it, what that would do. Mm. So that about sounds like that. a good idea. Because it would add a little bit of a, a crunch that you want in the outside of a cookie. Mm -hmm. Okay, the buzzer's going off, so we're going to go get those cookies again. It's not good, so. She's a pretty lady. Yes, yeah, she is. All right, so these are finished, but they're very, very soft. Let me see if I can pick one up so you can see the bottom. Just a little 
little bit. Can you see oh, yeah. that? It's mm -hmm. just yeah. mm -hmm. barely browned, mm -hmm. but the top of it is is not browned at all. Does it make it harder as they cool down? Interesting. Say that again, Don. Will they will they get harder as they cool down? A little bit. I think I actually baked the ones that I took to my sisters just a little bit longer because they seem so soft. They feel like they're going to fall apart. And that was something I read on. An, there's another recipe that's made with peanut butter that you have to keep it re in the freezer and take it out of the freezer five minutes before you want to eat it or it gets so soft it won't hold together. Wow. Mm. So. I like the, <laughs> What's that, Janine? I like soft cookies. Yeah. But in the summertime, a frozen, partly frozen peanut butter cookie doesn't sound half bad. No <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> So that's a recipe I could demonstrate, but you all would have to have your own ingredients to make it because I wouldn't be able to send it in the mail. Uh. All right. So what I'm going to do. She's pretty lady. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take just a couple of these off of the cookie sheet so we can let them cool and put on the jam. And I'm gonna pop these back in the oven for just a minute while we wait on those others. See if we can't get them to brown just a little bit more. Now I wasn't here for, uh, for a while. What temperature are you baking them at? Um, I forgot to tell you that it says 325. Oh. oh, that's why it's taken a while. Yeah, maybe yeah. you need to turn it up a little bit. That might be a possibility. So this is the sorghum flour ones, and they're not really browning either, but they still have a few more minutes. I'm going to move it up a little bit in the oven. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to our baking center with our <laughs> cookies. and see if these have cooled enough to add our jam. <laughs> oh boy. Now the recipe just calls for a half a teaspoon of jam. I don't know if I have strawberry jam. No, you have jam. jelly. Yes, no, you have jam. Okay. You like jam, I like jelly. <coughs> That's why you can put your own in there. So one right. can have jam and one can have jelly. That's right. And I like preserves. <laughs> oh, right. this looks great. What are you using, apricot or? This is apricot. Okay. I'll show that in just again in just a minute. Yum. Mm -hmm. There you go. I can't yeah, wait but, to get those in my mouth. Yeah, but we don't get to have the apricot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yet to answer your question i'm using a apricot spread that's all fruit okay there's no added sugars in this i actually picked this up at the natural grocer on uh 7th street okay um but you could use any jam or preserve that you have on hand Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted it to truly be keto, then of course you would have to look for something that has no added sugar. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was looking for. Something that has no added sugar, but they carry one at the grocery store, which I also happen to have. This one is also apricot, which tells you that I do really love apricot. <laughs> this is Smucker's. Smucker's. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. And it has fruit syrup 
apricots, lemon juice concentrate, fruit, pectin, and natural flavor. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have any actual mm -hmm. sugar added that's to it what, either. That's what I buy, but I buy strawberry. Yeah. Yes. Is, is that natural? Well, we have strawberry and raspberry. Say that again, Martha. Is that natural grocer on 7th Street wonderful? I've never been inside. It is. Is it just called the natural grocer or what is it called? I believe it is called the natural grocer. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's on the <sighs> south side of the street, about a block away from the um, wholesale flower store. All right. Mm. So our first batch is out of the oven. They did brown just a little bit more, but not much on the top. And let me show you the underneath again. Uh oh, you froze. Uh oh. She dropped it. <laughs> oh, it just froze. Looks like she's dropping it, but. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Gail, you, oh, there, there you are. <laughs> Gail, I have a question for you. Yes. Behind you, to the right of your mixer, is a white object with dough on it. Is that a scale? Uh, no, that's where I set that other section of dough, and it's sitting on the carton of eggs. Oh, a carton of Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it looked like it might be a, a weight no, scale. It, it does kind of look like that. Oh, it's parchment paper. I can... It's parchment paper. Okay. And the eggs. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's still such a beautiful kitchen. All right, everybody. Are you ready for a bite? Yes. 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 <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. <coughs> yum, yum, yum. Now, one more thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to break one of these so you can see the inside. Mm -hmm. It uh. seems a little dry. Uh huh. And there's the timer for the other cookies. For the timer, well, a little bit. I forgot to ask if y'all could hear the roofers out. Oh. out. No. They started before, they started somewhere in the seven o'clock hour this morning. So it's a neighbor uh, behind our house, a house behind our house. And of course, I always start early so that it doesn't get too hot. Right. Okay, so this is the cookie made with the sorghum flour. That's the top oh. side. And this is the underneath side. Those are gorgeous. Yeah. Now, you can also see the difference on the plate. Oh, yes. <laughs> the color. So, so, so did one of those sorghum ones crack in half? She, that's the one she showed us. Oh. Uh, oh, no, you, oh, never mind. You showed you. you. That's the one you showed yeah. us. Yeah. And this is the almond flour one that I opened. <coughs> Let me open one of the others. Huh. Okay, so this one, the texture's a little different. Mm -hmm. Can you tell, see that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it looks gooier. It looks a little more like the texture of a regular cookie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you all will indulge me, I'll actually taste it because I've already tasted the others. Sure. Okay. sure. I'll tell yeah. you what the so texture far. is. So we know if you spit it out of your mouth, you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not because I want to taste both kinds. She's it's still not... Very it's very dry. Uh, so we will need the jelly jam. You will. Preserves. 
definitely need the jelly with the sorghum cookies. That's interesting. It tastes more dry. I'm going to add just That's a- That's weird. Like, it tastes dry. Try to taste your taste. <laughs> I'm Somehow I understood it, but it, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Don. What did you say, Don? I was just mumbling, actually. <laughs> okay, so I put just about... a little bit of the preserves on it. Ooh. And you're having lunch. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it better. Okay. It, it must be that the Sorghum absorbs moisture faster than the the uh, um, almond flour. Almond flour. Yeah. Well, and that would make sense too. Yeah. For those of you who like milk and cookies, you'll definitely mm. need your glass of milk with your cookies. Okay. <laughs> I'll dip mine in tea. <laughs> a, a spot of tea would also be nice. Because these actually are uh, like a little afternoon tea cookie. Yeah. So that would be perfect. Okay. Too bad our friends from Scotland can't see those. Yes. Yes. <coughs> I'm, I'm watching a new series that's on Prime. It's called New Tricks. And it's about three older uh, detectives. They're retired detectives from England. Mm-hmm. And of course, teas comes up on everything. You know, every time you go visit, I want a spot mm -hmm. of tea, spot of tea. Everyone want tea, you know, type of thing. It's just kind of it's a it's a really an interesting program because these old and guys what's it called? called new tricks. New tricks, okay. These guys, these 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 older detectives are from the old school, but they have they're from an unsolved unsolved open case unit and they basically have better results because they think the way the old school thinks mm. they don't go with all of the new theories to think about the old ways and they come up with results that are just kind of phenomenal you know in their cases mm. anyway it's an interesting program thank you steve and what platform is it on it's on prime amazon prime okay. amazon, amazon prime it's on pps it could be on PBS. I don't know either. Yeah, uh, it's got like twelve or thirteen seasons of it, so there's a oh, lot what? of them there. Whoa. Okay, uh, but it's it's kind of it's a little bit, you know, it, it's got a lot of British humor in it. So sometimes you have to, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> well, British humor is good though. Well, it's weird. sometimes you know, you know, they'll we, talk British humor talk about things that we normally wouldn't talk about, or at least. In our generation, we'll talk about it. You know, the new generation mm. talk about them all the time. Well, we love detective shows. We are currently watching the Columbo series. Columbo, oh, okay. yeah. Do y'all like that one? One more this, thing. This is, this is very much like Columbo, except it's just not one person. It's a trio. You oh, know, that, that sounds great. And then so, each, each detective has different quirks and skills and it's just kind of an interesting you know mix of everything together Lollipops. There, there's a new one on pbs called unforgotten it just started a new series on sunday okay that is so good okay what's the storyline well they fi they find uh, an old they find somebody that has been dead for a long time and then they try to solve the problem okay. Oh. And they're always like four characters and you don't know who of these four did it. But they're all in on it somehow. Okay, that sounds good. It? Unforgotten. Unforgotten. Okay. That's, that's what the kind of basis of this one too. It's cases that people have forgotten, but somehow there's some things, you know, that pulls it back in. Like they come up with some new, some new. Yeah, evidence. something new. You know, of course, you know DNA is new since they started the whole process, and so they're going back and doing a lot of things like that. And um, 
it's just kind of an interesting whole program. So anyway. Yeah. And after, un after Unforgotten is a show called Professor T. That's uh -huh. also interesting. It just started. Okay. Also, but those you can watch independently. They don't continue, I think. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, Has and each of these... Has... Go ahead. Each of these Has... programs are independent, so you don't have to follow the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Has anybody ever watched the detective series Monk? Oh, yes. yes, I love it. Oh, yes. I love it. I was just Monk. about yeah. to have that. Yeah. My wife hated it at the beginning and then it grew on her. Yeah. Uh, it was I very it. ridiculous. But then all of a sudden it grew on her, you know, the more she watched it. Well, when the pandemic well, first I started. It's a little bit like that for me because yeah. it's almost like he tries to be annoying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't try to be annoying. That's his personality. He is annoying. Well, he's annoying to all of those people that are criminals. Yeah. That's like Columbo thing. was. Yeah, that's what a Columbo is. Yeah. He, he was annoying. Well, uh, we started at the beginning of the series because um, I think my son got it for my husband for Father's Day. Okay. And in one of the very first ones, one of the people that he was working with she described him so perfectly and every time i think of it it makes me laugh she described him as an unmade bed <laughs> and i thought that was so great because that's just how he comes off but he actually uses that as part of his persona mm -hmm to take pe catch people unawares mm -hmm. and to get information that he wouldn't get because of his appearance and his personality. Mm -hmm. Disarming. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's very disarming because mm -hmm. people don't expect him to be very smart yeah. because of the way he looks. <laughs> and his old raincoat and the cigars. And, and it's old... always wrinkled. And his old car is always smoking, you know. He had a Citroen or something weird like that. What was that? Some kind of weird car like a Citroen. Yeah, it's it's an old one. I don't remember what it is, but it's all, always it's smoking. A, we uh, actually looked it up uh, mm -hmm. this weekend. It's a Perigo. Uh, oh, Peugeot. Okay. Peugeot. 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 French. Yeah. Peugeot. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Y'all were talking about Colombo. Yeah. I was still talking about Monk. Oh. <laughs> and Columbo is his, his basset hound. Remember that? He's got a basset hound in the show. Yes. Columbo. Yeah. Yes. And he's yeah. an unmade bed too, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's all of them have their that's what makes them fun because they all have they, they speak to the inter how do you say the um Eccentricities that we all have. We see mm -hmm. some of ourselves in them. Pushed my limit. You're right. Sorry. When the Love pandemic it. first started, yeah. my yeah. first thought was, we're all going to be monks now. <laughs> we're, we'll all be like monks with all the, uh, the hand wiping and the, you know, not touching things. <laughs> Don and Myra, we lost your camera. Here we are. We don't see you. There we go. <laughs> Nancy Myra, Myra stepped here. out. Well, one of my favorite monks is where he goes to Mexico. Right. And he takes Ooh. all of his water in a suitcase and it gets stolen. He doesn't oh, drink no. anything for the whole time he's in Mexico. I remember that I one. haven't seen that one. Well, and somebody has a bottle of his water. I think one of the policemen does, and the policeman pours it out, you know, type of thing, you know, and it yeah. just uh, goes hey, crazy. Hey, yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the, the one show? Pro Professor what? Professor T. Can you spell that? T. <laughs> the just letter T. Just the letter T. Okay, great. We're all going to be watching the same shows now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Margie and Bonnie, um, make sure that Martha has your address and I'll get that from her so we can send you your cookies. Thank and, you. Um, yesterday, Gail. Okay, great. Thank you. Martha, 
you want to tell everybody what's up for tomorrow? Absolutely. Yes. I wanted to be sure you were good and done. Okay. Here's Cookie Conversations. And tomorrow, Peggy Spear hopefully is back from having her sick baby. And if she is here, she will give us pictures of beach Ooh. from the Eamon Carter Museum of American yeah. Art. Yeah. That sounds like a good deal. Doesn't yeah. it? Love beach mm -hmm. pictures. Yeah. yeah, I like I like doing jigsaw puzzles of beach pictures because mm -hmm. I love the gradient colors, and the Grace sunsets and, and the water. That's great. A beach puzzle is probably a little bit of a challenge, though, isn't it? I would. I like so. them better because of the gradients. It's it it depends on how well you distinguish shades of color. For me, they're easier because the the shades are, the I see like the shades. shades of blue. Good to yeah. know. I can tell the difference between those slight um, color differences. Janine, that's and a gift. I, I love it. There's a game that I play um, that is, I was pretty good at. I don't, I think it was just called Shades. And I happen to think someday, oh, that's why I'm good at this, because I used to do all those jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> you all are awesome. Gail, we thank you for showing thank us. You, thank you, Gail. Hope yes, to see you thank you, Gail. Thank Gail. you. Good to see you go again. It was and great to be here and to see everybody again. I have truly missed you all. Don't and you me. get a special treat because <sighs> I come back Thursday. Oh, um, cool. Hey. But I don't know what we're doing yet, so. Oh. Uh, the surprise. Well, we might, might make have these again. All right. I might, to, I might <laughs> have to buy some of that apricot stuff just so I can have apricot in my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you all are wonderful. Let's go back to gallery view. There we go. So we can see one another. Thank you all for being with us today. Thank we'll you. Thank you. For thank you. Hour. Have a great Bye, everybody. day, everybody. Bye. 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 B